Hey, how are you doing today? Today I'd like to show you how you can create this pair of swans against a nebula filled galactic starry sky on canvas board step by step. I'm super thrilled to do this. We're going to do this today live. And to that end, on the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He, uh, I move around a lot and I get a little crazy and he tracks me with our cameras to make sure you can see what I'm painting on the painting, you can see what I'm mixing on the palette, and you have some idea what I might possibly be saying to you if it would help you get through this lesson today. But basically I'm going to explain to you every part of this. I'm going to show you how to get a nice dispersion of star splatter. I'm going to show you how to create these wispy, stroke intensive, elegant skies. I'm going to definitely demo how to draw in the swans, and we're going to talk a bit about some basic principles on water so you can make those wet streets look better, those pond surfaces look better, all of that just get better at that today. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty thrilled about that. We're going to be doing it all in acrylic paint. Just real fast, let me tell you the materials we will be using. Oh, and I'd like to add, of course, I'm going to post up a traceable of the swans because drawing is just an art skill. It is not what defines us as artists or not. A lot of quilters are pretty artistic. They may not draw. All right. So I have this particular canvas board today is the biggest one of Space Week, which is what we're doing this week. It is an 11 by 14. And then over here I have some acrylic paint colors. I have Diox Purple, Titanium White, Cad Yellow Medium. You're not going to need a whole lot for this. This is pretty much the beak. Quinacridone Magenta, Thalo Blue, Yellow Ochre, Teal. And listen, if you don't have the exact color teal, guess what? You can also use Aqua Green. You're just looking for a bright turquoise. And if you really, really don't have any of it, you can make some Thalo Turquoise with Thalo Green and Thalo Blue. So we've got that all covered. Um, I had initially put in zinc white, but I don't think we're going to actually use any today. And I will edit that materials list with all these facts, mm. information, links to the website, where we like to hide those traceables. <laughs> but they're free to just go get. You just go get them and use them and have fun and upload paintings. It's all free, free, free. Mm. How you doing today, babe? Good. We're here in the Good. morning. We're here in the morning. This is To like that end, let me sip some Starbucks. Some, some Starbucks. Yes, some I'm going to take a minute and sip coffee and not... <laughs> Draw the second. We have, we, it's really nice. We have lots of folks here with us this morning, all ready to paint, and it's it's so nice. We have, we have a really great international audience in the morning, so it's nice to see everyone. That's actually why we've been going a little bit earlier in the yeah. mornings on these event weeks because it allows more people in our audience to have a chance to come to a live. Yeah. And ask questions. And if you're here on the replay, chances are somebody's going to ask the question you have almost at the exact moment that you have it, which is why it's kind of nice to watch on replay these lives later. I think mm -hmm. it's really, I get a lot of those messages like, I was just about to ask you that. And then somebody <laughs> asked it and that was exactly my question. I'm like, yeah, and universe yeah. is crazy like that. And don't be afraid to put them in the questions in the comments because we have a lot of folks that'll come in and we come in here and answer yeah. them. We got our, you know, our, our If we miss one, put it in the, mm -hmm. I don't mind. It's all good. Comment below. Be like, what? What? Yep. And I don't mind. None at all. All right. We have some wishes on our canvas today. Yes. Uh, we have some wishes for Rhonda, who's healing, and she's getting back to painting. We're just wanting her to just return to painting. Uh, short recovery for Teresa. And Title has a wish for her husband that he he is going through passing, and that that is just as much strength and support to that family as possible. Um, and Joe is looking for some creative support and people around him to sort of uplift and keep him on the upbeat and get that creative juice going. And then for our own Christy. I'm just asking the universe to cut her break <laughs> and give her a solid, you know, something that makes things just a titch easier. How are you? Good, good. There's How are you? And they're seeming to have a really great, a lot of folks are like, I love the morning show. Do you so, love the morning show? Yes. I love the morning show too. The so morning show. What materials are you putting out there? I'm going to put out our background colors and mm -hmm. my basic background, I'm going to be using a little to make my space escape. Oh, I have it. Space escape. Look at that. Escape. Picture I'm, in picture there. Picture in picture. Oh, I love picture in picture. It, it is both a blessing and a curse. Blessing when I get it dead on. A curse <laughs> when people are like, it doesn't look the same. <laughs> all right. And sometimes you just decide to change it, though, is all fairness. Because artist. <laughs> what could be going on? All right. So I have phthalo blue. And Doc's purple here. And I'm going to be using 
These are two inch stiff white nylon brushes. They're really inexpensive. Um, they come in these nice widths. They don't hold too much water and they're a real nice brush to put a background in, especially if you don't, you know, at this time have a lot, lot, a lot of resources to put into a specialty background brush. They're kind of a really nice option. And you can see they just get that paint. I very easily can get that paint. Get that paint. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. I wish you could hear the little noises it makes on the palette. But notice how when I dip that in, I didn't have any trouble at all with too much water. In any way. So this little color mixture kind of makes almost an indigo, which is probably one of the more fascinating colors, real indigo. Mm-hmm in uh, color history. A lot of American history and history from India and Europe all wrapped up in the color indigo. So much intrigue happening with that. But actually, believe it or not, it was one of the first open source projects in American culture. Hmm. Did you know that, Mr. Cooney? No. No, you not. know so many weird things, so I never, never know. I did not know that. I didn't, I, 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 <laughs> I didn't know that you could... So, yeah, I'm just so there that. was a young lady, and uh, her father had gone off traveling into war, and he was sending her back seeds of different things she could grow because their uh, rice was not working out. Hmm. And she ended up with some indigo, um, and she decided that would be a good thing to grow. took her four crops to get it going. I really can't imagine having my crop fail four times and having to replant. If you're wondering, all I'm doing is just brushing back and forth to create this smooth aspect. Ha ha, hair. You shouldn't see too many of those. So that's how I'm doing this, just brushing back and forth on this background, dipping in the water and getting more paint. Anyhow, she even had an expert come in and he, he, he sabotaged one of the crops. Huh. He poisoned the soil because he didn't want to have to compete against her indigo. And she finally got that crop going just when England went to war with France, which was the major supplier of the indigo. Wow. Right? A lot of countries involved. So many wars over color, you have no idea. I can only imagine having someone poison your crop. Man, that would tick me off. And that was like the third one. I don't know how she got to the fourth one. That is some determined, dogged spirit. Well, probably because she had some idea what that market was for that stuff. I think girlfriend just needed to make it work, and she had some people to feed, and that was <laughs> going to be the crop, actually, to be real honest. I kind of get where she was at. Anyway, so she got the fourth crop, and it went really well, and she managed to broker a deal with England. But instead of keeping it secret, she actually gave seeds to all the local agricultural farmers in her area and told them how to grow it, too, so they could congregate create a conglomerate or market for America and indigo. indigo. Wow. I know. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're just going to corner the market by all of us growing it. Let's go. <laughs> right. But it's just that sort of, I love that. That sort of open source spirit. It mm -hmm. reminds me of YouTube. Well, we, 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 we're really big supporters of open source software and open source development. So, And obviously free art education. And a, but and you I, yeah, from obviously a free art education. So a lot of these open source concepts are... Really near. appealing to us. Yeah. So when I have my background in uh, how I like it, I take a sippy sippy of my coffee, a deep breath, and congratulate myself. You should congratulate yourself. You painted in the background. You faced the white canvas. That challenge has been overcome. Everything after this has got to be super easy peasy. And now I get to put in stars after I caffeinate. Stars. You, ca you, you don't have to caffeinate. I'm going to caffeinate. Why do we have, I don't mm -hmm. know why we have to whisper when we say stars. I, it's, it's full of stars. It's full of stars. It is full of stars. See, and then like a That's few why. people get that joke. We are finally at a time in life, sweetheart. Were some of our jokes? <laughs> I don't. Are over. What? You're saying that mall rats isn't like the edge of pop culture? Did you just say mall rats? <laughs> I mean, I like Kevin Smith, but come on. All right, we're going to get yelled at for not talking about art. Art, I just put out some fluid white paint. Look, I really love golden. I love the pigment load in this, and I love the way this performs. However, I recognize that's not everybody's budget, and... If you don't have this, guess what? You can use craft paint in the little 
little bottles. What you're basically trying to get here is this paint is heavy body, it holds its shape and it doesn't reduce. This is soft body, it's self leveling and it really exits my splatter brush. This is my Art Sherpa splatter brush. Mm -hmm. It does my fine galaxy and stars and I like it because when I come to the surface I don't even have to work that hard like I barely pull back on it and I get the same splatter every time and I have convinced somebody to make these for me <laughs> so if anything ever happens to my good splatter brush guess what I can go get more yes it's the first time in my life that's ever been true <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right, so when I get a dispersion of stars that I think that I like, I'm going to rinse out my brush. I'm not going to leave it in water. No. Because this particular brush does not like that. And I am going to dry this with a hair dryer, which always gets to leave John just chatting with you guys about whatever's on his mind <laughs> while I draw my painting. Well, I will say hello to everybody because it's really nice. And <laughs> I see we have lots of... Uh, Kevin Smith fans out there too, so that's pretty funny. Um, thank you guys for coming to join us this morning. It's really nice to have everybody coming out and hanging out and chatting with you. Um, I hope to see. We've been. Seen, I have seen a lot of cool space paintings coming up this week. Uh, a lot of eclipse paintings uh, coming up on the feed, and those have been really cool to see. Thank you guys for sharing all of those. Um, you'll. Uh, we've got lots of man. So many new cool things that are coming up. We'll be announcing on the website soon. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, so while we start by saying, we're going to probably hang out and do some chatting on the website here after the show. Uh, there you go. She's back, and as you She's can back. see. Yeah. You might be wondering, what do I do if I get a star I don't like or I get a splatter I don't like? And I'm going to show you how real quick how to fix that before I put in my horizon line. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to grab a little brush. This is a number two bright. And I'm going to get some of my background color that I have mixed up. And I'm going to go here. I have a, a couple of stars I'm not into. And I'm just going to paint them out. They just, uh, they were just unusually shaped. I just didn't like their shape. Hmm. I'm just going to paint them out. I can always splatter them back in real easy. But if I don't want them, I don't have to live with them. Just away they go. Yeah. This one was still wet at its core. So what I'm doing is I'm wiping off. And I'm doing this thing. It's a weird thing I do where I am painting it dry. <laughs> so many little weird art skills developed over time. This is going to disappear into my canvas because I've got all these clouds. What? But I just didn't want this weird, gloppy little star that I was not into. Can I ask you a question while you're doing that here? Yeah, you can ask so, me all kinds of questions. Michelle was asking that she tried for a very dark uh, blue for a background mm -hmm. with phthalo and a touch of black. But it came out greenish. Okay, so you're really at the mercy of bl your black and some blacks have a warm yellow underbase and it can actually green your colors in fact really accomplished landscape artists will go back to using black in their landscapes uh will kemp being a great example of somebody who will actually use a black to make a green i know it's a crazy thing that happens to you mm. you know what i would say is if you want a really dark blue go prussian blue or try that diox blue mix and you can honestly go over the blue you don't like or the green you don't like with another blue and it will probably deepen up hmm. so something you might not know i did not know that so i'm going to measure up four and a half inches from the bottom and that's going to be my water line and and it's important for those to be level very level which is why i bother to use this is just a little t-square these are very inexpensive and that is because i am not the best at drawing a straight line. If you don't have a T-square, go grab your paper towels off the roll, rip out two sheets, whatever that is, because sometimes they're that weird quarter sheet, and fold it in half and use that to square up because paper towels are always square. Mm. Oh yeah. Just a weird thing I noticed out painting outside on the rare occasion that I do that. I'm like, oh, paper towels are always square. So I don't have to worry about having my T-square not. I'm gonna real quick paint in my water, which means I'm gonna put out a little of my phthalo blue again this time. A little bit of it. 
where to get my better uh, finish off this tube. <laughs> I'm going to finish off this tube with Thalo Blue. Go to your little squeezy machine. And I'm going to, um, on this one, add a smidge, just the smidge of yellow ochre. I'm going to put out another smidget, smidget here, <laughs> smidge of my teal. Mm hmm and then some white, and I'm gonna show you guys the basis of a super streaky water area. So I'm gonna get a good chunky bright. This is a number 10 black pearl bright. Has synthetic filaments, and basically what that means is it's stiff enough to handle my heavy body paint. It's not gonna soak up a bunch of water. So I get a little water on that. I'm going to pull out a little of my phthalo and a smidge, smidgen, see smidgen? Smidgen. Smidgen is just, you can barely see it, adding some white to this mixture. But I'm not mixing it in a whole lot, see that? I'm leaving it kind of streaky. In my water, I'm going to take this brush on the flat and just come across here, back and forth starting to put in the streak effect that you might expect in water. And like this line here, I need to keep it level. If you can't keep your lines level, go ahead and add some more guiding lines using your T-square. If you're like, man, I cannot get a level line no matter what I do. <laughs> so I just added a little more of the ochre and some white. And you can see I'm just dry brushing and allowing it to streak. I'm not mixing all the streaks out, and I'm even letting some of the canvas underneath kind of peek through. Let's get some more blue and a little white. I just want a nice streaky base before I put in my swans. I love painting on canvas boards because the storage on them is so easy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But I have to say this part where the paint goes around the edge of my canvas board makes me crazy. Yes. <sighs> And they're and they're not as easy to frame. Um. Well, well kind of. They That's are if they're standard sizes. Yeah. You can clip them in. Yeah, you can pop them into a, yeah. a glass frame, but you can pull the glass out of it, and then you know a picture frame. You pull the glass out and pop them in. I'm gonna add just a smidge. I'm. This is. I literally am just dragging this so lightly over the surface that it's just barely. Do you see how light? I'm going, oh, yeah. this brush pressure is so light, I just want some of these weird water effects happening. Once I have that sort of base for horizontal water, you're going to love this, but I'm going to real quick dry this so I can draw in my swans before I put in my clouds. If I draw in my swans before I put in my clouds, it's going to help me arrange my clouds in such a way that they don't look... Sometimes, like, you can, if you put your clouds in first and you don't draw on your swans, you can get weird cloud shapes sticking out of your swan's neck in a way you don't <laughs> like. <laughs> right. And then you got to fix it later. Super annoying. I'm going to dry it. Okay. So while she's doing that, I'm going to say, hi, guys. Yeah, I th how many hoots is this? I think um, this is probably in that one hoot range. This is uh, this has been this has been fairly straightforward. Uh, we'll double check with her when she gets back. I don't think she can hear me right now. But... Uh, I'm pretty sure that this is in the in the in that one hoot zone, um, and yes, good morning to everybody. I, I I lots of folks from all over the 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 world coming and visiting with us this morning. It's so nice to see you this morning. We appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. If you need to know where the traceable is, it's in the, a link is in the description below. Uh, you can also find links to the website where we hang out after the show and where we have chat going on and where we keep uh, a schedule updated uh, out there with all the things that are going on. And uh, we make uh, regular announcements about things. Um, we have, let's see here, uh, after Space Week, I know that we have a, we have Southwest Week coming up. And that's, uh, that's gonna, more information is going to be coming on the website about that. Um, she's over there fixing that uh, little dot that little star that she didn't like. Um, I see a couple of questions coming in here. If you leave if you leave them unframed, do you take care of the edges? So I'm assuming that uh, in in both cases there is an answer to that. In in the 
the canvas boards, you try not to let any paint get too far wet around the edges because it can uh, it can build up there. But on so there was a question that just came. Oh, okay, in cool. That was asking about uh, if if you leave them unframed, do you take care of the edges? And I was going to say that there's an answer for both canvas board and uh, a canvas board. No point in taking care of the edges if it's unframed. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could probably just stick a command strip on the back and hang it. That is not archival good museum gallery advice at all. But it is functional. Stick something on your wall advice. Um, if you have gallery wrap canvas where it goes around the sides and it doesn't have staples in it, you can paint the sides. And um, that's a way to finish the painting if you're not going to frame it. Um, it used to be you only did that with the really thick stretchers, but now they do that with like the one and a half stretchers. I'm going to tell you a little secret about art. Everything in art is fashion or perceived value, mm-hmm. right? It's we decide right. if it's okay and if it's good or if it's not good. And so one thing I would totally advise you to do in your art practice, especially if you're doing it as a hobby and not as a professional, is just kind of follow your bliss. Right. Because you have to decide if it's good. So if you're like, man, I just like these things better if they're painted around the edges, always do that. And if you're like, no, I don't really want to do that, don't do that. Right. It's just, a, it's just a trip. That's like the secret of artists. It's all perceived value, and it's we kind of make up what we think is good and what isn't good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I that answers exactly. Did it? Yep. I always feel so bad when it's one of those answers. I'm like, uh. All right. What I'm doing here is I'm just checking that... My swans are sort of placed in that same size relationship as my first swans. So I'm just very carefully giving myself some guidelines of constraints about the size that they are so that they're sort of the same, right? Just kind of getting the roughing. Now, for the- me, this has ended up being, I will tell you real quick so you can have the exact measurements of where I'm at, right? Is from the top. This is six inches down. So I'm saying about six inches. Yep. And then from the bottom, it looks to be about two and a half. So six inches from the top, two and a half inches from the bottom is about the space my swans are going to take up. They're sort of symmetrical. They're not perfectly symmetrical. You didn't see me just do that there. They're sort of <laughs> symmetrical. <laughs> just pop it in there. <laughs> and they're meeting up in the middle. So when I first put these guys in, when I was first trying to make this decision, I realized that what I wanted to first put in was their heads. And I wanted them to be sort of facing each other here in the middle. So I'm going to put about a silver dollar size circle and another silver dollar size circle. And they've got to be fairly close to each other, right? Then I'm going to come down with a little beak coming off. And I'm going to put this beak just a little bit lower than friends. I think swans are a really great romantic painting because, like, you know, they mate for life. And also my hero has swans, Lisa Vanderpump. Yeah, I'm owning it. I'm owning it hard. (laughs) So I'm going to curve the neck down. Because they have a beautiful curved neck. The neck will come back and be tapered. So the neck will be thinnest right here and then thicken out into the body. And I'm going to give this a nice kind of little chest here. And do a similar little curve here. So see how they're almost making a heart? Yeah. You could push this even further if you wanted to and make them make an exact heart. If you're like, you know what? These things need to make an exact heart. I try to keep the necks about an inch wide. Notice I try to keep a nice thick neck. If you had a really thin neck, this wouldn't look nice or feel nice. So I like to curve from the top of the head and curve this down. So you come off the top of the head and make a gentle curve down. And again, remember, guys, if you don't draw, that's cool. We got a traceable. (laughs) This is just if you guys are working on your drawing and you want to kind of try to block these things in and get more 
confident in that area. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the water is very still and flat, and so their little belly areas are flat. And then I'm going to come to the edge of the canvas, curving up the tail. Right? From the deep inside, I'll pull out a wing. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to just kind of arced line up, right? I like the little arc line up, and I know that my wing is going to come back like this, and sort of be like this, and then the tail will be here. Tail, just a little bit of a loose wing. So that's how I'm doing these sort of interesting little swans. Dun, dun, dun. I don't need to do all the facial features um, at this time, but. I generally will put those in with paint. But now that I know where they are, I can get my number eight out. Hmm. So this is a number eight cloud brush. And I'm going to load my brush with a very dry paint. Hmm. Right? And then I'm going to show this to you. I'm also going to demo a bristle bright. So if all you have is like a square bristle or another kind of different clouding brush, Deerfoot Stippler. It's not important as much the brush that you're uh, using, but the way you create the stroke. I like this because it makes it easier for me to do that stroke. And another tick is if you're using this kind, make sure your canvas is super dry. Because if you've got a lot of glazing medium in here, it's sticky, then it's a whole crazy mess. I definitely want some cloud to peek out right here. So what I'm doing is I'm just very lightly creating an airy open bit of atmosphere. See, I push that out in just the white. And I'll imagine that this is coming up. All my clouds are sweeping up like this. And then we're going to have this nice focal star. So this one isn't the circles that I sometimes do. This is more like this random. See how I'm making this random motion? Mm -hmm. I'm going back and forth and a little bit up. And I'm trying to make sure that I don't repeat patterns, because these clouds are like these little stratas. Is that what they're called? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so they're like these little wispity stratas. And it's OK that I'm painting over my stars, and I'm just pushing and going back and forth. And the brush, you know, you could do this with your finger, too, by the way. If I took my finger, I could be like, you know, just random. You're just trying to make random wispies. Some of the best painters in the world just use their fingers for clouds. It's just however you can get the job done. So I go see that little curve out, and then I go back and curve here. These are sort of like this little rocking stroke. I'm going to just try to put these little stratas in. Each time I do these little atmospheres, they'll be a little bit different from each other. And I'm just trying to create this feeling of random airiness. And we'll get all pink up in here, but I want some high pink coming out. So I'm going to take this cloud like all the way into the wing. So when you're when you're picking a brush to make clouds with, do you want one that's stiff or soft? Uh, so masks? a good cloud brush is stiff, right? Um, so you can really dry brush with it when you need to. It generally will give you a shape, but I mean, I do these with brights all the time. Um, a Deerfoot Stippler is a great one. A good, uh, I have these, and I'll demo one of these later. This little Cambridge bright with, a, with these bristles. And this one is particularly good because the issue with a bristle brush is once you rinse it in the water, it's mush. It's not stiff anymore until it's dry. These have synthetic filaments with the bristles, so it will retain its stiffness, and you can just towel dry it out and still work it. And I'll demo that somewhat on the other side. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to demo both. Now, here I'm going to want some, like, little fleshy, it, little loosey-goosey. See how I'm just, like, very lyrical with these? Loosey-goosey clouds. I thought that was so cool when I was doing this. I was like, these are loosey-goosey clouds. <laughs> Let's just make a, just a gentle little 
see just I'm going back forth back forth and up and over and I'm randomly dancing around mm -hmm. I like to put Jackie Chan the martial artist in my mind when I am painting clouds when he's doing his drunken monkey martial arts he moves around very randomly and unpredictably <laughs> and I feel that that helps me get my cloud on it helps you envision your cloud movement and it, it does I'm putting some more like heavy or white here but these are just gonna help me you know see what I'm what I'm doing here right yeah. now let me finish these out again each time a little bit different a little bit more interesting this is going to rinse out really really well and I'll show you with the bristle brush on the other side again very dry and I'm going to just come load some heavy body paint onto this and then let's say down here low maybe there's a bit of a pink cloud peeking out from this little guy here and then I definitely want some little clouds coming over here see now I'm just going I'm just using the brush and still being kind of crazy they're both good clouds right I'm just mm -hmm. on the corner I'm just creating the same shapes you might prefer this you might prefer that the point is the tool you use and love and relax into is always the right tool for you the essential part of the painting though is you you cannot be replaced so just try not to get too worried about a technique or tool or anything just realize that the only part of the painting the painting can't live without is you so I'm just pulling this over here just going 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 Definitely, we're going to need some here. Look at that, just going. Mm -hmm. See, just scumbling up, being random, being crazy. Is it as easy? No, I have to work a little harder with this. But that's okay, I don't mind working. And you're just using the edge of that brush? I'm just using, I literally, so hopefully we can get on, I'm like on the edge here, and I'm just going around, and sometimes I have to go on these fine parts of the bristles I've even been known to roll the brush to create the effect right and I mean you can see there's definitely some difference but if you're getting the clouds in that's all that matters you just gotta get them in just get them in man just get them in I'm going to do a little kind of wild bit here for around the star, right, where I've got this sort of little cloud bit. Whatever you're doing, just be easy with yourself. So I've got some nice little cloud banks kind of coming in. I definitely, definitely want to lighten this up here. Definitely, definitely lightening it up as I go. As this is all drying. Oh, I rinsed it out. Hmm. That's okay. That's okay. I'm going to take my dotting tool. Where did I put my dot? There's my dotting tool, and I'm going to get into my. This is also part of my galaxy set, but basically these are. This is a dotting tool, and it's got a big bead and a small bead. By the way, back of a brush will work. All right, I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to just place a nice dot that I like. It's really its whole definitive definition is it's a dot I like. And I'm going to load up my brush, my bristle brush, which I've dried out with a towel so it's not soft. And remember, this has synthetic filaments. So if you're doing natural, real bristles, 
you'll need to have several um, brushes so that you can keep them dry for the stiff effect. And I'm going to just lightly paint around kind of like a little star glow, like you do. And uh, I might add a little blue. Kind of come here. I'm just adding to my little star glow. And then I've got a little teal out, so I'll grab some of that. Give some teal star glow, which I didn't really do the first time, but I feel compelled to do this time. <laughs> I'm going to wipe off my brush, go get a little white. And come back. Now, if ever you lose some stars around your star that you wanted to put back, totting tool is a really good friend right now. Because you can go dot, 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 dot. See, those are all back. When this is dry, you can get your clouding brush. I think I'm going to get um, a smaller size, number six, and I'm going to maybe put out my teal and my magenta. You can use any magenta that you have, any hot pink. The idea is just you're creating this play of pink versus aqua, which is really hot right now in art, weirdly. So I'm going to load this up. You can put out some glaze, but like I've said, as glaze is drying and it gets sticky, it can mess with your scumbling brushes because they get all stuck in it. And they don't want to do their little motion. But it's also great to build a glaze when you need to, so sort of six of one, half a dozen of another. I just want to make this a little more transparent. And I'm going to pick some clouds. I guess I'll pick this nice light cloud to come in kind of hit with this teal. So what's fun about this is the teal and the white and the way that they're going to play together. And it's going to make a whole lot of cloud for me with very little work, doesn't it? And I like that. Why be all stressed out? Maybe this guy could also be blue. You know, just you just find who you like and what you think you're, is working for you and just paint that in back and forth just loose and airy and it's okay to take your color over your dark because as you'll notice it will diffuse into the background like they do right see how it's diffusing and again I'm just being airy and light Airy and light. Airy and light. Just love it. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. Oh wait, I've got some right here, don't I? I think I was gonna put some blue. I wanted to play the blue against the pink here on my swans. So I'll just add a little you know, I'm going to put a lot of pink through here. I'm going to mix that up. Come here, I'm going to do some blue. And some pink. Be super happy. See, so just being random. It's nice if you have a brush that gives you a round shape because you can really dash it around. And in my life, I've found so many brushes that I've enjoyed doing atmospheres and skies with. I even found one of my favorites at um, a sip and paint. They were throwing out a bunch of really dead brushes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> and I grabbed all their murdered brushes for cloud brushes. And there was a couple in there that I was passionate about. I was like, these are the best cloud brushes ever. Until this. Which mimics that. And just put some. I'm just finding little spots. Like I'm putting it up here and I'm going to come up and 
just, I'm just going around. Clouds, I know, it's so hard to get loose and relaxed. It's like doodling at first. It's challenging, right? Then as you go and you doodle a bit, you realize, oh, no, I really like doodling. So I'm going to load up with some magenta. Just come in and... Start putting some of magenta out. I love my magenta. Now I find while I like my magenta right over my white, I also like to add a little white into my magenta because I like this pinker aspect. If that makes sense. See? Yeah. Clouds look really neat as they go in. Aren't they fun? Yeah. And really spend some time looking at skies. I know John's been looking at skies a lot lately, mm -hmm. like you do mm. when you're in the car Sometimes and you've you started do. painting. And realize all the variations of the clouds that are out there. A lot of times I'll see people do a perfectly fine cloud and think that they've not done a great cloud because they were only thinking of cumulus nimbus clouds or some particular idea of a cloud that they had and not realize that they had nailed some other type of atmospheric effect. So really spend time looking at clouds. They might surprise you. Yeah. I'm going to add a little pink into my teal here. So you can see I'm just like putting in some pink, adding some teal. I'm just enjoying the process. You just enjoy your process. Yes. You know, if you want some underneath this cloud, go ahead and enjoy that. So Cindy says Hi, that Cindy. Uh, here at NASA, we love that you're doing Space Week in Huntsville, Alabama. What? <laughs> I'm geeking out. I'm What's geeking out. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, NASA. <laughs> I'm geeking out. Just anybody, if you're at NASA, I can't tell you how much I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I just think you're so cool. We actually tour. Mm -hmm. here in Houston like as a recreational thing completely I like the space deer because <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of deer moved yeah. into NASA because it's Texas I'm sorry I just totally geeked out <laughs> did you <laughs> see me have like a complete fangirl geek out moment so to, put, so to put some of that in relative perspective when you take the tour in Houston Space Center they drive you around and there's a bunch of deer that have made have figured out that they can live on the NASA campus, pretty much with no problem. And they get fed and they <laughs> hang out, and no one's going to mess with them. And they figure, because deer are pretty smart. And so there's now some deer that hang out on the NASA <laughs> the campus. Yeah, this, this, yes. My daughter's very favorite stuffy is from NASA. Mm -hmm. We call it Space Bear. <laughs> space Bear? <laughs> <laughs> She's very into Space Bear. It's a rainbow bear, has a little astronaut suit. So I'm taking some pure magenta while I'm trying to recover my girl from my geek moment. <sighs> some people have celebrities. Some people are like, scientists! <laughs> oh my god, it's Tyson. Can you imagine how I would lose my mind? Can That's you imagine, crazy. John? I, I don't know about y'all, but Roddenberry was a big deal in my house. And uh, Carl Sagan was a big deal. And my dad was really into stargazing and telescopes that was like his whole thing he actually like hand polished lenses because mm -hmm. that's apparently the thing you can do and my husband too big into it yeah i'm adding some pink to these and calming down <laughs> <laughs> isn't it nice that art is so calming yeah <laughs> sometimes you need it i'm needing it right now <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. 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 Cool. Cool. Sherpa. Cool. It's no biggie. All right. I'm just adding pink into the places that I've left white. I'm just enjoying this. Yeah. Just putting in these colors and allowing the, the form to happen. Do, 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 do. 
sometimes a lot of what I'm thinking about as an artist is does it have balance like when I'm working and I'm not like just teaching and I'm just quietly say in my studio I'll look at a piece and say does it feel balanced to me yeah. so on top of does it feel like realistic clouds or nebulas or whatever I'm trying to represent through my artistic mayhem I'm also like just does it feel balanced do I like the arrangement of the shape and color mm. and even if you're very new to creativity, believe it or not, your brain has opinions on these subjects and you're more informed on your preferences than you know. But I think sometimes we get so critical of ourselves that it's real easy. I'm going to just make some little, look at this. You go straight. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> 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 yeah. See, you can you can just go crazy and enjoy the process. Of what you're doing. Here we go. I'm adding some dark here to the bottom. Mm-hmm. Adding some dark to the bottom. Yeah, I like how it, how the how the, it layers on top of the white to create the depth. Yeah. And then kind of falls on and off. That's Just really a little cool. bit of airy fairy, happy little form that's mm -hmm. happening up there. It's a beautiful little little spacey scene. It's it's very lovely, lovely. All right, I'm gonna get another little bright. I'm gonna get this little bright. This is a number six black pearl. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to get it wet in my water. And the first thing that I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little of my phthalo blue and my aqua, interestingly enough. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to make little back and forth dashes. I'm going to make these somewhat level like you do mm -hmm. and I'm not going to cover every inch of my canvas with them this is just a starting space right I'm going to come with a little of my purple and my blue and this is just sort of that irregular water surface but right under my swan line look I'm going to deepen the water oh yeah make a shadow mm -hmm. on both sides That's going to be an important thing. You can pull that down. And you can see as the wet paint gets into the wet paint. Another thing I'm going to want to do is this time I'm going to want to really make sure that I get some quinacridone and some phthalo, but more to the quinacridone and a little white so I can make it feel like a little bit of the sky is reflected. Mm. I just didn't do that touch last time and it really bugged me. You don't have to do it this time, but I have to. Because the painting's been staring at me. <laughs> it stared me down. Just a hint of it. I just needed it there. And now I'm going to get a little of my blue and white. And what I'm doing is I'm just making the ripples from where they're swimming in the water kind of abstractly. Gotcha. Some just white. Because they would what? They would reflect in the water, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. You'd be picking up all the different colors. Yeah, because the water is just a kind of fluid movie mirror. If you start thinking of water, especially under certain conditions, like at night, cold, dark, gloomy days, if it's not see-through Caribbean water, it's a mirror. It's and true. it's reflecting the sky. And once you get that water moving, it becomes a reflective surface. Yeah. You so, know. just something to think about it when you're painting, even if you're just painting from your imagination. Now, all of this is drying up here, and I'm letting all this dry down here. One thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a detail brush. Okay. I'm going to get a detail brush, and I'm going to get... Uh, actually, no, I want a different detail brush. I'm going to get this detail brush. I'm going to get a number one round, right? This is from the my new custom line of brushes. Woo! 
So this is number one round. Any small detail round will work. I'm going to put out a little fresh fluid paint because when paint gets old it gets gummy. And when I'm talking about trying to get a decent line on something, it does help me to have the paint be fresh. I'm going to try to slip this out of here because I'm going to use my T-square to cheat. One of my big issues when I do my star sparkles is that I don't keep a very good straight line. So I'm going to go right through the middle of my star sparkle with my T-square. Oh, that way you make a nice little... Yeah. Just to help me, because you know, man, I'm a struggler. <laughs> Wipe with your finger if you're doing this. Make sure you're in the middle, though. Another little faint line. And then when I come in with my paint, I won't be as um, struggly. I'm not saying I won't have little an unshaky hand, but at least my line won't be. That's a neat trick. Makes them nice and square. It does. It's just nice to have a nice little detail. Just doing this little detail bit. Like I said, it's not like I won't still <laughs> have a little moment, but this just gives me a steadier aspect of what I'm doing. And then I can put my Reflections coming around very lightly. See? Just yeah. helps me. This is a camera effect. I don't think they actually do this. But I like to put it in because sometimes it feels like a twinkly little star. Yeah. So you just do that till you're happy with it. You just got to do that till you're happy with it. Yeah. And now I'm going to start putting in my swans. And my swans are an interesting bit of kit. Because I'm going to put out my yellow ochre. And a little of my fluid black. And I'm going to definitely have to put out some more white. got some magenta left and it's I'm going to also just a smidge of my cad yellow but if you had, didn't have cad yellow you could just use the yellow ochre gotcha if you really didn't have it I'm gonna take a little of my black over to my ochre and gray it a bit like you do like you do and this part of my swan will be I'm going to come in my circle, and I have just enough of my line left to see what the heck I was thinking, and I'm painting this in through the chest with this warm gold color. And it's okay if you notice like a lot of the canvas is showing through because the ochre is very transparent. Mm. Um, but that's okay because we have so many layers coming what we really need is just this feeling of the warmth gotcha under the piece another place we're going to put this is we're going to come up the wing a oh little yeah. bit like this. Not the whole wing, just some of the wing. Yep. With that. Guess what? We do the same on the other side. Just to throw it all off. Because these are a pair. They are a pair. It, now, it's really interesting. When I look at the picture in picture, I can see where that, that yellow undertone kind of comes through there a little bit. Yeah. That really, that really does warm them up. It does. And they need to be warm because the background is so cool. 
to help them pull forward more than even just their value, right, where I lighten them up and make them white, mm. this warm undertone helps them pull forward as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Because warm colors feel closer than cool colors, which feel far away. Yeah. Yay. Just giving them a nice little chesty bit. And then let's make sure they got a nice little wingy bit too. So coming up here. And it's nice to have this, I like to have this as sort of a very, the whole bit on the wing I'm gonna do in a very loose stroke. Like you do. Mm. Now, rinsing out my brush. Rinsing that out. I'm going to do a neat thing. I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue and black. And a smidge of my white. And I'm going to come under here. And I'll blend these two areas together. Mm. Come under this wing. Up to the tail, which is just, I'm just flicking the brush to finish the tail. Not a huge amount of detail. And then I'm going to make sure. I'm finishing. See, I'm flicking the brush stroke up and coming back and yeah. flicking up. This one is longer than this one is longer than this one. And following inside, tapering back, tapering back. And I'll blend those two areas together. Woohoo! We're doing it! It's looking really great. It's just a fun painting to do, in my so, opinion. Uh, Jen from Switzerland was asking, how Hi, do you Jen. Well, how do you decide what color should be in the undercoat? Or the underpainting? Um, so basically what I will look, like, look at as an artist is um, there's a bunch of decisions that we make as color. And so there's a very long, hour-long answer for this. But the short one is is that um, I look at where I want the object to be on my canvas because I'm always creating the illusion of placement, right? Because this is obviously just one surface and the swans are not on a lake in front of a galaxy. So when I'm trying to create that sense of space um, beyond object placement, which is what I paint first, like the background and the stars are the first thing I paint and then the clouds and then the swans. And that creates that sense that they're in relationship to each other by making these colors cool and these colors warm, I can push that event further. So if you look at a color wheel, if it's on the yellow, orange and red side, those are warm. If it's on the green, blue and purple side, those are cool. Within those, they each have a warm and cool. Um, I know th this is still not gonna be the hour answer, I promise. <laughs> So when I looked under the swans, right, and I was looking underneath them, if you look at anything long enough, you're going to start to see two kind of color values in there. And then on top of that, you look at, well, where will this place this in my canvas, right? So in this sense, when I was looking at different swans and feathers, I noticed that they would have a blue, purple, yellow or pink kind of undervalue to their feathers. And then I just picked the one that was going to serve me the best on this painting, which is the warmer because of the cool background. Gotcha. A lot of decisions. A lot of More decisions. big art quests to do. <laughs> really is what it is. I need to do a whole bunch of big art quests on this, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. But it is something you can learn, and it, it sounds intense at first, but once you kind of get used to the principles of it, it gets easier and easier. Now, how many hoot is this? Um, this is a two hoot. Two hoot. Okay. Tom uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is a one hoot, and the day after that is the l the last day of the space week is a three hoot. Gotcha. Okay. So most of space week has been a one and two hoot. We only only have one three hoot in the whole kit. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing is, if you're painting um, an acrylic colored ground, and you want to paint the opposite of what your color is is like underneath it so if it's warm then you want to have cool and if it's cool you want to have warm so there's a bunch of stuff <laughs> again it's an hour-long answer but that's the basic gist of it right 
I'm making decisions about what things feel if they're pulling forward or pulling away. And creating kind of an, like in perfume, they have an undernote and a top note, kind of a similar thing. So I am getting my blue and my black, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side with my wing. You know, pulling to here and then tapering it back, right? Creating my nice little wing shape that you do. Right. You know, because wing. I'm adding a little undercarriage of black right there that I'm going to come back and deal with. I'm going to let all of this dry for a second because when I start dry brushing my white onto there, I'm really not going to want the undercolor to mix up into the white. So in this particular stage, I need to let it dry. This gives me a great opportunity to come talk at the beaks. At the beaks? At the beaks. And I'm going to get a little, little, little brush. This is number two bright. Mm-hmm-hmm. And I'm going to make a nice, nice orange, which I'm just going to use my cad yellow in my magenta. And so some folks who are just joining us were asking, you know, what, uh, how, how, do we, how do we rate our difficulty? What's a hoot? And so on a, a scale of one to three, we go uh, one hoot being like an owl hoots. Uh, you know, so it's one because hoot. you're having fun. We don't want to tell people how hard it is. Because it's a hoot, and then the two <laughs> two hoots is it's a little more difficult, and three hoots is a little more advanced for beginners. And you know, these are all. But scaled. they're all rated for a different stage of beginning artists. Yeah, these are all for beginner artists. This is the idea here. So a but scale of one to three. There's a lot of stages of being a beginner. There's I don't know how to load a brush with paint, and then there's I'm just not ready to paint on my own yet. And that's why we have three levels for beginners. It's because we recognize that, you know, we're not all one size fits all. Mm -hmm. Is that even still a thing? I, I get so annoyed know. when I see that at the clothing store. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go, I disbelieve this. So I'm just painting this in orange. Yeah. Right? The thing about the cad is it has such a nice pigment load. I could I can use the yellow ochre, but the cad has a very nice pigment load. And it's going to give me a nice effect. It's going to take a couple coats though. Yeah. For sure. For sure to get that so I can let that dry. I'm going to see where everything is at. If it is all dry, then I can get to my draw brushing. Do you want it real quick? Just dry it off, make sure. Sure. Oh, I'll turn it down for a second. <sighs> Once she does that, I'll say hello again to everybody. Good to see you all out there. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us today. I do hope to see all of your space swans and say thank you to all of our viewers. I think it is really awesome that we have folks from NASA watching us and all of the different ast uh, astronomical groups that could be out there. You know, it's a... Uh, it, one of the things that we really love is, is seeing your pictures and the stories of where you guys are at and uh, how you take what we do and, and do stuff with it. I mean, it's, it's really just amazing to hear from people all over the world who paint pictures with us. So I'm going to, you, you keep guys. talking, I'm just going to add another little coat of my uh, orange that I made. Yeah, I was just thanking everybody for for you know sharing their stories and their pictures. Oh, yeah. it's, you know, it's really just nice. That's it's a really rewarding part of doing this show is hearing from everybody. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. All right, that's drying for a second, so I don't have to hair dry that. I'm gonna get a bristle brush, I a think. Bristle brush. A bristle. It's a Grand Prix. So, awesome oil brush. Not really a great acrylic brush. All right, so I'm going to get this Cambridge Bright. Again, it doesn't have water in it, so the bristles will be stiff and scratchy. And I'm really wanting to offload my paint mm -hmm. in that method. So, I'm going to just very gently. And I tend, I like to leave the outer edges a little lighter on the brush than in interior, which I'll have be thicker on the paint. 
just going to dry brush this all in. Now, between the wing and the body, I might do a very light pressure. See how light that is? And then as I'm coming out, I'll press down and drop more pigment. And just creates an implied line that's nice. It's coming down here. Just I'm going to very lightly dry brush over the gray because I really want that gray value right there. Adding some white. And on the neck. See? Thickening that up. Mm hmm All right. At the tail, I'm going to definitely... Brush that in. And then again, on the white of the brush, very light. Yeah. Very light. Very light. Then in my wing. This is where you're letting some of that under I'm undercoat show through. Very important to let some of the undercoat show through. Very, very, very important. So the strongest white is right there. Oh yeah, the most intense. Just painting this back, letting that feather up into these feathers. Isn't that nice how that just does that? Mm -hmm. So cool. Same thing, this side. Same thing. You know, and even though they look a lot alike, they don't have to be total twinsies. We can have slightly different brush strokes, like slightly different values around different elements of them. And it's sometimes things feel more white when they're painted over an undercoat. Mm -hmm. It just makes the white on top feel more white. Just lightly back here, because that's the shadow. I like to, on the neck, kind of round my brush strokes to help imply that roundness. Yeah. And then it sort of... Yeah. I notice how you sort of spin your brush as you're making that corner. Yeah, I'm always twirling my brush to my advantage. To make those brush strokes imply the line. Yeah. And that's something artists do that, you know, it's hard to see as a student is like, we'll be on the flat and then we'll twist it over to the edge mm. to get control. So I'm here and I'm making a nice big wide stroke and then I'm on the edge to curve the stroke. Mm. Be hard to see. That's why I like YouTube um, in some sense as a teaching source because this up close cam. You know, when you're working with students and there's a bunch in a classroom, you know, they may not see every detail of your brushwork and you've got to really walk around. Yeah. And that's great to get to talk to everybody. But one of the nice things about this is this up close cam lets you really see what's a foot. When I'm when I'm on when I'm there on it. <laughs> when you're on it. He does his best. <laughs> this is a hard deal. <laughs> We're doing all right. Okay. So again, dry brush in the back here by the tail. All right? And then just light. And that's how I get this, is my pressure is light, my brush is stiff, and my paint is thick. Gotcha. If I were doing fluid paint, it would just be covering it. Fluid paint is like craft paint. Which is a really cool product. It just is a little bit better for stuff like one stroke. Right. Just because it's designed for that more fluid application. Mm-hmm. It's like watercolor brushes make terrible acrylic brushes, but they're still great brushes. Right, yeah. It's just not good for acrylic. Now, you, you shouldn't use watercolor, you shouldn't use acrylic in watercolor brushes, though. Here's the thing. Acrylic absolutely shortens the life of brushes <laughs> and possibly your sink plumbing. Um, so, you know, you can spend so much money on a good watercolor brush and they can last so long because watercolor does not damage your brushes. And if you do any reasonable care... 
a watercolor brush can almost be passed down to your grandchildren. So I personally separate up those brushes. I mean, they don't explode. It's Yeah, it's just that you know, watercolor doesn't have the same kind of buildup or... It's not uh, a polymer emulsion with pigment. Yeah, it's it's just a, it's a different medium. So, and and oftentimes watercolor brushes are designed to absorb lots of water and and lay oh, it yeah. down in a very predictable way. So they're generally not ideal for doing water or for doing acrylics anyway. So let's do some refinement. Mm. I'm going to get into my nice black paint, and one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come along my wing on the edge of my number two braid, making a nice fine line. And I'm going to just choose the edges of my wing and just refine that a bit. Right? Maybe deepen this black shadow that's right there. Pop that out some. Some. Just a little bit. And then on the back of these little tail feathers. Who doesn't want to do that, right? Same thing here. Just a nice little wing refinement. Stroke that back. And then a little bit at this tail here. Now, for my particular ease and enjoyment, I'm going to switch to my detail round here. Yeah. And I'm going to put in some beak detail. Some beak detail? Some beak detail. So I'm going to make a nice little band around the beak first. Both sides. I might put out a little more <coughs> black, like you do. Like you do. Like you do. While, while you're, while you're. Have we sherpa yet? We 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 have. We've been up and down here, and I was just gonna say that we had some some bubbles that I was gonna put on while you were doing that, but I wasn't sure. I wanted to let you finish what you were doing there before I. Okay, I let me you let me just have a sippy bubbles. sip of my coffee, and I'll finish this up because I feel like I need to celebrate that you guys showed up today. And I need some bubbles, baby. You need bubbles. And I need to, like, finish this thing up on a bang. <laughs> Woo! So thank you guys for all coming and hanging out with us today. It's been a very lovely morning chatting with everyone in, in here. And we really loved when you guys when you guys share your pictures. So don't forget to post those up. Come to artsherpa.com where you can post those up and see all the traceables and the links to our website. All the, all the stuff is out there. So... Oh, yeah, and if you're at home and you can't get up and dance, don't forget to wiggle your fingers and wiggle the toes, right? Because we got to celebrate whether we can get up and dance or not, right? Even a nose. Even like a nose. Tabitha. You can wiggle the nose. Our Texas <laughs> snowflakes. You can keep my snowflakes going. I don't mind. <laughs> you can finish, there, finish up there with... Uh, snowflakes? With snowflakes. I'm going to look like it's been snowing, so I'm just doing a nice little line, you know, like you do on your beak. It's the in shadow. Right. I want this to be a little lighter and a little more orange, so I'm going to grab a little of my yellow because I feel like this got a little dark on me and just sort of make sure that that feels like the lower part of a beak. See? Yeah. It's got a little, it got a little dark on me. And I'll do that the other side so it doesn't get away from me there. So that's just a little black and yellow because I know I want this half of the beak to be darker, but I don't want it to be black, black. Right. There we go. Better. Now I'm going to get my black black. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to give myself a little nostril right here. And make sure I give my little banding right there. Nice little banding for my little, little swan. My little, little swan. So happy. You can put the little line down the beak if you want it mm -hmm. or not. It's or not. up to you. Get a picture, picture back there. Up to you. Up to you. Little nostril again. Kind of pulling that down. 
Now the big trick is to put an eye right here, mm -hmm. and the eye is a nice little circle. This eye works with the reflections. Oh, yeah. So we've got to put the reflections back to make the eye happen. Cause they have so right now it's just kind of like, I made a little black dot. They have that cool mask that they They, they do. Have. I'm going to bring some of the mask like this, see? Yeah. And now the trick is I'm going to bring some of the mask down the chin and curve the jawline. See? Oh, yeah. Ah, so pretty. Same thing on this side, little eye. Paint, 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 paint. The black soft paint helps me do this. Oh, yeah. It really does. It gives me a hand. Right? I'm going to, I like to taper these. There we go. See how I smooth those edge yeah. edges? It just helps. So I just come here first and I'll be like, round that out. Oh, yeah. Round it out. You get a little weird spot, you can always just round out your eye, too. There you go. Now what's going to make these eyes not look like weird <laughs> bandit striping? Yeah. I'm going to rinse out my brush really well. I guess who I'm going to go back and visit? Your my fluid white. fluid white. Reflection right here. Reflection right there. And this is the hard sauce. Oh yeah? You can use a paint pen if you need to. There's an inner eye reflection that happens. See that? Yeah. And that's how it goes from looking like a weird stripey stripe to a swan, and then what you get to do is make your mark, <gasps> your maker's mark. You're going to beat me to the, there you go. Make your maker's mark. Because you made it. And you're awesome. Yeah. And you started your day with something creative. And you painted this fabulous swan fantasy. And everyone's going to be like, you're so awesome when you share it. I can't wait to see your paintings. You know you can come by the website and share that with me. You know you can come by... Uh, the groups, we've got the Facebook group, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, so anywhere you want to share this art. John also stocks in not a creepy way because he loves to see the artwork. I love to see the artwork. I hope you'll come back for tomorrow. It's a total one hoot painting of Aurora Borealis with that really cool tree you guys liked and voted on. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Look up at the stars and take a minute to dream. See you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.